the Indian bison. There's the mountain goats, the serao. You have an enormous variety of reptiles. The region contains one of the thickest surviving forests on the planet. It also boasts one of the deepest and longest cave systems in Asia. The center of the area is Nokrek Biosphere, a 300 square mile wilderness preserve made up of largely unexplored jungle, teeming with wildlife. The Garo Hills is probably the best uh, forest areas in uh, Meghalaya. It also helps that the Garo Hills has uh, two of the largest protected areas in Meghalaya, but it also has a lot of community forests which are protected by the people themselves. So some of it in the form of sacred groves, where uh, small patches of forests are protected uh, for, a, for a deity. Uh, maybe it dates back to the animistic times. Basically that patch of forest is completely left alone and nobody is allowed to take out any material from that forest. Esteban Sarmiento has arrived to begin the second phase of the expedition. I'm really anxious to see what you've got. Yes, huh? Have a seat. Sarmiento meets with local researcher Deepu Marak, who has studied the reports of the Monkey Man for over a decade. A number of eyewitnesses living in the Garo Hills have reported encounters with the creature. Marak and his team went to each location to gather and photograph any evidence. To start with, these are the photographs that I have collected. These are from different locations in Garo Hills. And there was around 13 to 15 footprints, some are on the sandy beaches. Sarmiento is eager to examine Marak's evidence. It seems to be a rather wide foot. Yes. I can't really see the depth here. Was it different depth in the middle than in yes. and the heel? Uh, uh, yes, it is deeper in the toe, in the front side, and in the heel. This uh, footprint measures 14 and a half inch exactly. And, and around uh, six and a half. So it's a seven. rather wide foot, much Again, wider yes. than, a, than much, a human much foot. Wider, yes. And this seems to be some branches. Yeah, these have. are the broken branches from the same location. This is not an elephant area. Sarmiento analyzes branches that have reportedly been broken by the creature. The only known large primate in the area that could be responsible is the gibbon. And it's too big for, say, a gibbon to have broken yes, a branch. Yes, yes. This is, this is clearly something that's broken and twisted. Yes, yeah. It's twisted in a bear wind. It is twisted, twisted yes. With, his, with a claw, basically. So this is basically during dry season. Yes, very much. What else you have to show me? This is the nest uh, where the suspected Mandiburung uh, have been living for three days. The locals call the beast Mandiburung, or the forest man. This is in, in a forest floor, because I'm just yes. seeing the floor. Yeah. This is a dried grass dried from the grass. nearby the jungle. That's been pulled together. Yes. Sarmiento meets up with Marek's crew. They will travel with him to the sighting locations and assist in interviewing the witnesses. Let's go make plans. Okay. We have a lot to accomplish and we don't really have a lot of time, uh, so we have to get pretty well organized. I want to meet the person that actually sighted the Monday morning. And let's see, wh where is it that we have to go to, to meet them? And we can talk to the eyewitness, the lady, also the creature. Uh, she is in uh, Rongri village. How far is the drive going to be? Uh, from Tura first, we have to drive to Bakmara, and from Bakmara to Rongsu. Then from Rongsu, we have to hike to uh, Rongri village. So the drive will be around uh, five hours, yeah. and from Siju, the trekking will be around four hours. That's just one way, four hours. One way, yes. Another four hours back, Coming so yes. we'll probably have to sleep there overnight. Yes. Sarmiento plans to place two cameras, one video, one still, in the jungles near where the monkey man was spotted. Let's get going. Okay, okay. let's get started. Right. Okay. The team begins the journey to Nokrek Biosphere, home to some of the most unique and rare animals in India. It is here, near a cluster of sightings, that they will set up the camera traps. Sarmiento spots signs of large animals in the area. Looks like a latrine. Probably cat. Put my glasses on. But look, it has some seeds and stuff, so chances are it's a civet. And these are hair. You see, they got hair on them. So let's see if there's any bone in them now. Not that big seed, huh? And cats always try to reuse the place where they go to the bathroom, so it doesn't smell up the whole area. 
where the animals are hunting at. The fresh evidence of a wild jungle cat means the monkey man may have similar prey in the area. The team has climbed nearly 1,000 feet during the hike. Where is the one? It's the end of the trail. All right, why don't you guys go get the gear together, and I'm going to find a place to set the cameras at, all right? Okay. Sarmiento is looking for a defined animal trail on which to position his camera, since it would be a likely path for the monkey man. Okay, you're going to come and build the camera with me, and these guys are going to put the solar panel up on you, okay? okay? Get the gloves over there. The team has chosen the PIX controller cellular eye system because of its unique capability to remotely transmit images out of the jungle over cellular networks. Whoa! The camera is powered by a solar panel positioned in the trees. It can run indefinitely. When the motion sensor is triggered, the built-in cellular phone will transmit the image to the Monster Quest team over the internet. The same process as sending a photo by email. I don't know they point the antenna in the direction of the closest cell tower. According to the GPS, the cell tower is in that direction. Just a little bit back, just a tiny bit. Good, good. We got, we got an extra bar in there. Let's see if we can just tighten in that position. There is a concern the signal isn't strong enough. But when they attempt to send a test image, it works. That looks good. All right, I got some uh, pheromone chips on, so we're going to put these up. Sarmiento finishes baiting the area with chips containing deer and primate scents, meant to lure in the monkey man. The rest of the team sets out to deploy a camera to capture video footage of the creature. And they notice a positive sign. There's a lot of animal tracks here. Since it's a dry season, the animals will come to drink water. This looks like a good spot. And that's a good view. I think we'll put the camera here. All right, we'll turn it on. They deploy a DVR eye camera, which can record more than two hours of high-quality video. It is able to record both daylight and night vision images, making it ideal for the jungle environment. For this camera, the team uses fruit as bait to entice the creature. I think we're done here. With a little luck, we might find something. Sarmiento meets a local farmer who recently saw the monkey man. While I was collecting banana leaves outside Nokrek, I saw the creature on a hill about 100 yards away. Sangma describes the beast as giant. I estimate it was 8 to 9 feet tall and looked like a man, but it was extremely muscular and covered in very thick black hair. For three days I saw it in the area, walking on two feet and occasionally laying down. The team recovers hairs believed to be from the creature. They are sent to the science team for further analysis. Upon my first examination of the hairs, I was really excited because this was a hair I hadn't seen before. Professor Marna Eriksson at the University of Minnesota will attempt to identify the species of origin. Hair fiber morphology is an extremely valuable tool in identifying species. We'll be taking the hairs to the laser microscope and we'll uh, take three-dimensional image of the outside of the hair fiber. Essentially kind of a mini CAT scan that will allow us to do some species identification, at least to rule out some. But to get a positive ID, we'll have to do this in comparison to other hair samples from known animals. Erickson is excited by the prospect of discovering a species new to science. If this is a unique animal, unknown to science, we won't be able to make that positive ID. But that in and of itself is a terribly exciting opportunity for us. 
Monster Quest is searching the remote jungles of India for evidence to unlock the mystery of the Curse of the Monkey Man. Esteban Sarmiento is leading the expedition team into a deep, remote region of the Garo Hills to interview another eyewitness. They finally arrive in Siju, the last village connected by road, after which they must continue on foot. The mountainous terrain will make the five-hour journey slow. With tigers and elephants in the area, hiking at night is prohibited. So they must rush to complete the 20-mile round trip before dark. At noon, the team reaches the tiny village of Rangrigitam, where Rosna Marek awaits. Marek only speaks Atong, an obscure Garo tribal language. Tell me what happened with this creature. The creature had very thick hair, so you couldn't see its skin and blood all over its head. Rosna Marek tells a terrifying story of a close encounter with the creature. I was alone at home, sleeping with my young baby. I heard noises and thought it was my husband coming home, so I started to light the fire. But the creature hit my hand away. Blood. The creature smelled like blood. I was scared for my baby because I saw blood dripping from the mouth of the creature. I couldn't see the face clearly because it was too dark. But the eyes were reflective and the face was really long. I just sat in my bed until the creature left, and then I started crying. Sarmiento hopes to classify the creature using the evidence he's found and these interviews. He had nails like we do. He didn't have like long nails. He had nails like ours, but they were just a little longer. Were you able to see its ears or were they covered in hair? The ears? Hair was covering the ears, but I could still see a little bit of skin. Humans and apes have nails instead of claws, and very little hair on their ears. Marek's answers do not quite rule out misidentification. Were his fingers like ours, or were they longer? Did, did he have a thumb like we do? Or did it have a very small thumb or no thumb at all? The creature had fingers proportioned like we do, and it had a thumb like ours. Humans have relatively large and long thumbs compared to the fingers. Could you see the white in the creature's eye? The eyes were reflecting light back at me, so I couldn't see them clearly. Reflective eyes are a characteristic of nocturnal animals adapted for night vision, but are rare in primates. Were its legs long like a man's legs and its arms like a man's arms, or were they short legs with long arms like a gibbon. The arms of these primates are proportionately longer than the arms of humans. It was proportioned exactly like a man. Sarmiento then asks the obvious question. Are you sure that what you saw was not a man with a lot of hair on his body? I'm absolutely sure that what I saw was not a man. Was, was the blood on the creature, on the hands and the face, was it on the body? I didn't notice blood on the creature's body, but it left handprints smeared on the wall and blood from its mouth 